Hello everyone, this is Saurabh from Eddie Eureka and in today's session we'll be focusing on data analysis with Python. So let us move forward and have a look at the agenda for today. So first we'll see various applications of Python. After that we'll understand the data life cycle starting from data warehousing till data visualization. Then we'll focus on data analysis and we'll see how we can use Python for that purpose. We'll also look at what is Panda's library and we'll also understand a bit about NumPy and SciPy. Then we'll focus on various Pandas operations, merging, joining, all those things. And we'll see after that Python for statistics and Python for Hadoop. So till now, any doubts? Are you guys clear with the agenda? If you have any questions, any doubts, you can write it down in your chat box. I'll be happy to help you. All right, so Jason says all clear. So does Dave, Jessica. What about the others? All right, Ayushi says all clear. Siddharth says move on. Neha says go on. All right. Thank you guys. So we'll move forward and we'll see what are the various applications of Python. So these are the applications of Python. I have listed down only four of those, although there are many more. So you can perform web scraping with Python. That is, you can extract certain contents from a particular web page. You can perform a web development. You can perform testing as well as you can perform data analysis. So for today's session, we'll be focusing on a data analysis part of Python. So are we guys clear? So guys, let us move forward and see what exactly is data life cycle. So this is the data life cycle guys. Over here what happened, data is stored in different formats. We have a CSV file, we can have an Excel file or an HTML file. So data is basically stored in different formats. Now what do you do? You actually convert that data or transform that data into a single format and you store it somewhere. That's where data warehousing comes into picture. Now once you have stored your data, you can perform certain analysis on it. You can perform predictive modeling, you can join merge data, so various other things that we are going to see in today's session. Now once you have done the analysis, you can even plot it in the form of a graph and that stage is called a data visualization. So this is just a general overview about data lifecycle. If you have any doubts or questions, you can write it down in your chat box. And in today's session, let me tell you guys, we'll be focusing on only data analysis here. Any questions guys? All right, so Ashish says he is clear. So is Jason, Devon, Jessica, Janice, Ayushi, Neha. All right, fine guys. So let's move forward and understand what exactly is data analysis. So what is data analysis? So let us understand data analysis with the help of an example that is there in front of your screen. Over here what happens, we have a data set in which we have data about the unemployed youth across the globe. So country-wise from 2010 to 2014, the percentage of youth that is unemployed within that particular country, we have data about that. Now what if I want to find only for a particular country, say Afghanistan in this example, and in that particular country, I want to find the unemployed youth between 2010 to 2011, or you can say percentage increase in the unemployed youth in Afghanistan between 2010 to 2011. Now what should I do? So basically what I need to do is, in this particular data set, I need to perform certain analysis. That analysis should give me the percentage increase in unemployed youth in Afghanistan between 2010 to 2011. So this basically explains what is data analysis and why we use it. If you have any doubts with respect to what is data analysis, you can write it down in your chat box. It is a very simple concept, guys. I don't think so there should be any doubt, but still, if you have anything in your mind, you are free to ask me. All right, so I've got a confirmation from almost everyone. We have no doubts here. So let us move forward and understand how you can actually perform data analysis with Python. So basically to perform data analysis with Python, you need to import a particular module, which is called Pandas. So let us discuss about Pandas in the upcoming slides. What is Pandas? Pandas is a software module written for Python programming language, which is used for data manipulation and data analysis. Now it can perform that at a fairly high performance rate when it is compared to other Python procedures. Now we can say that Pandas is actually built on top of NumPy, SciPy and Matplotlib. Matplotlib is basically a data visualization module that we use in Python. Now when we talk about NumPy and SciPy, NumPy is actually a fundamental package for scientific computing in Python. So it contains a powerful n-dimensional array object, it has tools for integrating with C, C++, and it is very useful in performing linear algebra, Fourier transform, random number capabilities, etc. When I talk about SciPy, SciPy is again an open source Python module used for scientific computing and technical computing. 
SciPy contains module for optimization, linear algebra, integration, interpolation, special functions, Fourier transforms, all those things, right? We'll actually focus on NumPy and SciPy in the next session. For this session, we'll be only focusing on Pandas. And we have a separate session on Matplotlib as well, where I'll teach you exactly how to perform a data visualization using Matplotlib. So if you have any doubts, till now you can ask me. Any doubts, guys? So we have no questions till now. So I'll open my PyCharm and I'll actually tell you how to import this Pandas library and how to actually create a data frame. So for that, I'll open my PyCharm once. So this is my PyCharm guys, so over here what I need to do is I need to first import the Pandas module. So for that I'll type import Pandas as PD, that's what they usually keep, so yeah, let's follow the protocols. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a dictionary, say that contains the data about say my website. So we can have columns like day, visitors, bounce rate, alright. So let's go ahead with that. I'm going to name my dictionary say as XYZ underscore web. So over here my first key will be day. Day and it'll actually include the day so it'll have a list of days 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Yeah. Now my next key value pair will be actually about visitors so I'll write in visitors. So visitors in day one, say we had around 1,000 visitors, then we had 700, then we had say 6,000, then we had around 1K again, then 400, and then say 350, yep. And so the next key value pair that I'm going to add is say bounce rate. Bounce rate is nothing but the number of people who have visited your website but have left your website immediately. So yeah, which is not good for any website bounce underscore rate so bounce rate will be around say 20 again 20 second day also make it 23 then say 15 10 and 34 yep so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this dictionary and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this dictionary into a pandas data frame. Now how we do that, let me first declare a variable say df and over here what I'm going to type in, I'm going to type in as pd for pandas pd dot data frame and the name of my dictionary which is xyz web. Now go ahead and print this data frame and we'll see what exactly happens. So yep, it has converted our dictionary into a data frame. So what all columns we have? We have bounce rate, we have day, and we have visitors. So this is a very basic introductory example for you all guys in order to show you how to make data frames using Pandas library. I hope you all are clear till now. If you have any doubts, any queries, you can write it down in your chat box. Ashish, Jason, Devon, anyone, any question? Jessica, Jagati, Ayushi. Neha, any questions, please write it down in your chat box. So we have no questions till now. So I'll open my slides and we'll move forward and have a look at various operations that you can perform on Pandas data frame. So these are the operations that you can perform with Pandas data frame. You can slice the data frame. That is, if you want only a particular part of that data frame, you can do that. You can change the index value. You can convert the data into a different format. You can actually change the column headers, you can perform concatenation of multiple data frames and you can even perform joining and merging of two or more data frames. These are all the basic operations that you can perform with Pandas. So we'll move forward and have a look at these operations one by one. First we'll look at slicing. So over here we have a data in which there is an index value which is nothing but the year 2001, 2, 3 and 4. Here we have interest rate and here we have US GDP in thousands. Now I want to slice a particular column from this particular data frame. So what will happen if I do that? It should only give me, so when I slice only the starting two rows, it will give me only till 2002. But when I slice the last two rows, it will give me only for 2003 and 2004. So this is how you can perform slicing. So let me show you guys practically how to do that. So this is our data frame guys. And over here, if I only want say the starting two rows. So for that, what I can do is, 
instead of print df I can do it as print df dot head and I want only the starting two rows so I'll keep two here and we'll see what happens when I execute this so yep there are only two rows that are present so this is how you can actually print only a part of the data and if I want only the last part of the data that is the last two rows so what I can do is I can convert this to tail instead and we can do that as well go ahead and execute this and yep you can see that it has printed the last two rows so this is how you can perform slicing if you have any questions or any doubts you can ask me right now any questions guys all right so we have no questions so I'll move forward and we'll look at the other operations that you can perform with pandas after slicing we are going to talk about merging so what is merging let me explain you that with the help of an example that is there in front of your screen so over here we have two data frames and in one data frame we have index values from 2001 till 2004 and in another data frame we have index values from 2005 to 2008 now what happens when I merge both of these data frames let us see what happens now these two data frames can be merged together to form a single data frame and we can actually make sure what all columns that we need to keep common so over here we have common columns as HPI interest rate and index but when I talk about GDP uh, we have two US GDPs one is X and another is Y so this is how actually you can perform merging you can actually make sure what all columns you want in your final merged data frame so we have a question from Jason he's asking what about the index the index has been changed all right Jason nice observation so what happens is I have actually removed the index the index values that was year earlier I've actually made that as 0 1 2 3 so I'll don't worry so don't worry Jason I'll actually open my PyCharm and tell you guys how to do that practically but before that if you have any doubts you can ask me right now any doubts all right so we have no doubts so I'll open my PyCharm once again so this is my PyCharm again guys I'm going to show you the merge operation so for that what I need to do is I need to import this pandas module so for that I'll type in import pandas as pd and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a three data frames let me name it as df1 and over here what I'll type in I'll type in pd dot data frame and I'm going to use a tuple and inside the tuple I'm going to define a dictionary and I'll be using multiple lists inside that dictionary so the first key that I'll use is HPI house pricing index and the value that I'll assign it to HPI is a list and in that list I'll place certain values so let it be 80 comma 90 comma 70 comma 60 all right so now I'm going to define one more key and I'm going to name it as interest underscore rate and the value that is assigned to this is a list which contains the interest rate so I'll type in 2 comma 1 comma 2 comma 3 now I'm going to define one more key and I'm going to name it as say IND underscore GDP and now I'm going to define a list here so for that I'll type in the values 50 comma 45 comma 45 comma 67 all right so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close this dictionary and I'm going to define the index values so for that I'll type in as index equal to whatever the values that I want in my index so I just want the year so I'll type in 2001 comma 2002 comma 2003 comma 2004 so this is our first data frame in our second data frame also we'll do something like similar to this I'll type in PD dot data frame open and close parenthesis and over here I'm going to define the same key value pair that is HPI let me copy it all right so we have HPI now I'll define one more key value pair and that is interest rate so again I'm going to copy this whole thing and I'm going to paste it here and the same India's GDP also I'm going to copy in and I'm going to paste it here now as in the I've done in the previous data frame as well I'm going to define the index values for that I'll type in index equal to a list and my index values will start from 2005 so I'll type in 2005 comma 2006 comma 2007 comma 2008 I forgot the comma here so yeah comma and now we have two data frames so now what I can do is I can go on and merge these two data frames so for that what I'll type in I'll define one variable say merge equal to pd dot merge 
and the data frames that is df1 comma df2 now go ahead and print merge and we'll see what happens print merge go on and print this so as you can see that we have merged the two data frame that is df1 and df2 and we have got one single data frame now what if I don't want to keep certain columns as common when I perform the merge operation so what I can do is I can write in the columns that I want to keep as common so if, suppose if I want only the HPI column to be common so I'll just type in here on HPI and when I go ahead and print this so as you can see only this particular column is common that is HPI rest everything we have two different columns for that that is India's GDP that is X and Y again we have interest rate as X and Y so this is how you can perform merge operation if you have any questions or any doubts you can write it down in your chat box any questions guys any questions Ashish, Dev, Theon, Jason, Jessica, Ayushi, Jagrati alright so we have no questions now what I'll do I'll again open my slides and we'll see the other operations that you can perform with pandas so we saw merging operation right now let us move forward and have a look at the next operation that is joining so in joining what happens the two data frames are joined on the basis of their index values so let me show you that so we have two data frames one is this and another one is this so over here what happens when we join both of these data frames so let us see what happens as you can see that by joining these two data frames we get this one single data frame now one thing to notice here guys as I've told you earlier as well joining happens with the index values so over here you can see that we don't have any index called 2005 over here as you can see that we have no index that is 2005 but after joining the 2005 index appears in the data frame but there is no interest rate or US GDP thousands associated with it similarly when I talk about the data frame 2 that is the second data frame over here we don't have any 2002 index value so the value with respect to 2002 will be NAN and for unemployment also it will remain as NAN now you must be wondering what is NAN so when there is no value attached to a particular index it writes this as NAN that means not a number so let me practically show you how to perform a joining I'll again open my PyCharm and we are going to perform join operation in that so this is my PyCharm guys and over here I have two data frames DF1 and DF2 which I actually used in order to show you the merge operation now for join operation what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this HPI key value pair from the dictionary and same I'm going to do it for the second data frame as well and instead of interest rate I'm going to write in here as low tier HPI low underscore tier underscore HPI and certain values to it so yep I'm going to type in here as 50 comma 45 comma 67 comma 34 and instead of India GDP I am going to type in here as unemployment and certain values to it so I'm going to name it as one three seven six five six one three five six sorry all right XYZ anything doesn't matter now let me just change these index values so I'm going to type in here as 2001 2003 2004 and yeah let this be 2004 only and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in joined equal to df1 dot join df2 and print joined let's go ahead and execute this and see what happens so over here what happens in in 2002 we have no values that is attached to lower tier HPI and un unemployment so it has actually printed NAN that is not a number and in 2004 we actually have both the values available so it has printed that so this is how join operation happens if you have any doubts or questions you can ask me any questions guys so we have no questions right now so I'll again open my slides and we'll see the other operations that we can perform with pandas so we saw exactly how to join two data frames and let us move forward and see what is the other operation now we are going to change the index and column headers now let us see what how this actually happens so we have two data frames here so one contains index interest rate and US GDP in thousands another has index as the year and we have only US GDP thousands there is no interest rate here so what happens when I change the column headers or I change the index so over here as you can see I've changed the index value as the interest rate and I've changed the column header as GDP instead of US GDP in thousands 
So don't worry guys, I'll actually open my pie charm and show you practically how to do this. Now first what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of this and I'm going to define one data frame, let it be DF. And now over here I'm going to type in key value pairs in a dictionary. So first of all I'll write in say day and inside that I'll type in 1, 2, 3, 5 or 4. Now one more key value pair so I'll type in here as visitors. So in day one we had around 200 visitors, then we had 100 visitors, then 230 and then we had 300 visitors. 230 and then we had 300 visitors. And I'll give a one more comma and I'm going to define one more key value pair. So for that I'm going to use the key as bounce rate. And, and I've already explained you what exactly bounce rate is. So I'm just going to type in the values 20, 45, comma 60, comma 10. Alright, so we have this particular dictionary. So in that dictionary, let me convert this to a Pandas data frame. For that, I'll type in PD dot data frame and it'll convert this to a data frame. Let me open and close parentheses as I forgot. I'll convert this O to a lowercase O. And yeah, I have made a mistake in the syntax. So it actually has open and close parentheses. I need to add E also here. Now go ahead and print this. So we have got this particular data frame. Now I want to change this index value, say I want day here to be my index value. So for that what I can do is, I can type in here as df.set underscore index and I want my index to be day and that's it. Now go ahead and print this and we'll see what happens. And over here I need to type in here as in place equals to true. Now when I go ahead and print this, as you can see day has become my index value. So this is pretty easy guys. So you just need to set your index value whatever you want and you can get that data frame with it. Now my next task is to convert one of the column headers. So say instead of day I want to convert it to date. So let me first remove this. So now I want to convert one of the column headers. So for that what I can do is df so as you can see, we have successfully changed the index value to day. So I can even plot this. So for that, what I need to do is I need to just import one more library, which is matplotlib. I'll have a separate session on matplotlib, so you don't need to worry much about it. matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Now import from matplotlib import style. Import style. All right. And now what I'm going to type in here, I'm going to type in style dot use 538. Yep, I'll keep it as 538. And now I'll well, remove this print statement. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in df dot plot plt dot show and go ahead and execute this. So we have got a graph in which the bounce rate is represented by the blue color line and the red color line represents visitors. So these are our index value or you can say the day and these are the values corresponding to that particular day. So this is how you can actually plot it, though you don't need to worry much about data visualization part because I'll be covering that in the upcoming session. I just wanted to show you how this works, so I've just given you a good example of that, that's all. So you can visualize. Now our next task is to actually change one of the column headers. So for that, how what I can do is, first let me remove all of this. Now suppose if I want to change the column header from visitors to users. So how am I going to approach this task? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in here as df equals to df dot rename columns equal to I want to replace visitors with with what I want to replace here I can replace it with users. Now go ahead and print df and you can see that column header has been changed. Instead of visitors we have users now. So this is how you can actually change the column headers and index values. 
If you have any doubts, any questions with respect to this particular operation, you can write it down in your chat box or related to all the topics that we have discussed till now. Any questions, guys? So we have no questions till now. So I'll open my slides again and we'll see what are the other operations with pandas. Concatenation. So you have a student data in which you have name, age, sex and phone number. Now you want to add email address to this particular data. So you can perform concatenation and add the email address field at the end of this particular data. Don't worry guys, I'll actually show you practically how to perform concatenation. So this is my pie charm guys. So in order to show you concatenation, I'm going to paste the two data frames that I have created earlier. I don't want to type it again because it's going to take a lot of time. So I'm just pasting it. Now in order to perform concatenation, I'm going to declare a variable, say concat equal to pd dot concat df1 comma df2. Go ahead and print this and we'll see what happens. So yep, as you can see that we have concatenated the two data frames. So the index values are from 2004 for the first data frame and then it starts from 2005 to 2008 for the second data frame. So as you can see that concatenation has been successfully performed. So we have index values from 2001 to 2008 and for the first data frame it is till 2004 and for the second data frame it starts from 2005 till 2008. So this is how you can perform concatenation. If you have any doubts or any questions with respect to this particular operation, you can ask me. Any questions, guys? All right, so we have no questions. So I'll again go back to my slides and see what is the next operation that we are going to see. Now comes data munging. So data munging basically means that you can actually convert a particular format of data into a different format. So if you have a data which is in... Uh, say CSV file, you can convert that to an HTML. Similarly, you can perform that operation with the other data formats as well. So let me actually show you that. I'll again open my PyCharm. So this is my PyCharm guys. So let me first remove all of this and I'm going to actually read a CSV file which is there in my system. Locally it is present in my system. So I'm going to read that file. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in this. This is nothing but I have defined a variable country. And in that country, what I'm doing is I'm using the pandas module in order to read the CSV file, which is present at this particular location. And finally, this index underscore call equals to zero actually makes sure that I have no index present in that particular data frame. That's all. So now what is the operation that we are going to see here? We are going to convert the CSV file into an HTML file. So for that, what I'm going to type in country dot to underscore HTML open close parenthesis and uh, I can say edu dot HTML now go ahead and execute this and we'll see what happens and I'm going to open my projects folder as you can see that edu dot HTML is added when I click over there it gives me the HTML code for that now what I can do I can copy this path and I'm going to open my browser and I'm going to paste that path and we'll see what happens. Yep, so we have got this particular HTML table. So it was in CSV format, we converted this to an HTML format. So this is how you perform data munging with pandas. Any questions, any doubts still here guys, how to perform data munging? So we have no questions till now. So we'll be more specific and we'll see a use case in which we have the data about the global youth unemployment. And let me show you how it looks. I'll open my slides again. So we have a data set in which we have the percentage of unemployed youth globally. So for every country, we have the data of the percentage of unemployed youth from 2010 till 2014. So what is the problem statement for this particular case study? Let us move forward and see that. So basically, I want to find the change in the percentage of unemployed youth for every country from 2010 to 2011. So what I want, I want to see how the trend is. What is the percentage change between 2010 to 2011 for every country? So we'll see that. First, let me show you how the data set looks like. So it looks something like this. We have the country name, then we have country code. For then 2010, the percentage of unemployed youth. Same goes for 11, 12, 13, and 14. So this is how our data set actually looks like. So this is how our data set looks like. We have the country name, then we have the country code. 
and then over here we have uh, in 2010 the percentage of unemployed youth for similarly for 11 12 13 and 14 as well so let us move forward and actually perform this data analysis in which we are going to find out the percentage change in the unemployed youth between 2010 to 2011 so for that again I'll open my pie charm so let me first remove all of this so now I already have the code in order to do that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it and I'm going to explain you what exactly I'm doing so this is the code guys over here first I've imported a couple of libraries I wanted pandas I've imported pandas matplotlib for visualization and the style is 538 let me tell you guys you don't need to worry a lot about visualization because I'm going to teach you visualization in detail in the upcoming sessions so for now just focus on pandas and the various operations that we can perform with it now I've defined one data frame that is country and this is pd read that csv which is present in this particular path so I have my data set which is present in this particular path and then what I've done I've made the index value as zero that means I don't want any index that's all after that I've defined one more data set df in which there will be only the top five values of the particular data set that means it will contain only the first five rows of the data frame country after that what I've done I have defined an index value that is country code I only wanted country code to be my index value and after that I have defined one more data frames SD in which I want to re-index the columns that is I want only 2010 and 2011 to be my columns that's all so let me first show you how this SD data frame looks like let me comment this first and I'll show you how SD looks like So yep, as you can see, we have the index value as country code and we have only 2010 and 2011 column headers. That is only for the five rows. All right. So this is how my SD data frame looks like. Now let me uncomment these lines and I'll remove this print statement. Now after that, what I've done, I've defined one more data frame DB, which is nothing but the difference of index difference between the two columns. That is 2010 and 2011. So that will actually give me the percentage change in each and every country between 2010 to 2011 in the percentage of unemployed youth. So after that, I'm using a bar plot. So finally, I have just shown it with the help of a graph. Let me show you how this looks like. I'm going to run this and we'll see what happens. So, yep, this is a graph over here. As you can notice in Afghanistan between 2010 to 2011, there has been almost a rise of 0.25% of unemployed youth. And when I talk about AGO, that is Angola, in that there is a negative trend. That means the percentage of unemployed youth in Angola has been reduced. When I talk about Albania, in Albania it has increased. That is from 2010 to 2011, there is an increase of around 1.25 percentage of unemployed youth in the country. When I talk about Arab world, almost 3.1% of increase is there in terms of respect to percentage of unemployed youth between 2010 to 2011. And for ARE, that is United Arab Emirates, there has been no change. That means in 2010 and 2011, there were exactly the same percentage of youth that was unemployed. Now, over here, I can perform multiple operations as well. Say if I want to find out this for 2011 and 2012. So I can just keep it that way and I can just go on and run this. So as you can see here in Afghanistan between 2011 to 2012, uh, the percentage of unemployed youth has went down by almost 1.25 percent when i talk about angola there is no change for albania it has increased around 1.5 percent and uh, it has increased to one percent for united arab emirates there has been no change this so this is one example that i've shown you where we have performed an analysis on global youth unemployment data this is just an introductory example pretty basic example that i've shown you there are a lot more things that you can perform with pandas so we are going to discuss all those things in the upcoming sessions but for now this is what pandas is and this is how you can perform data analysis and if you have any questions any doubts you can write it down in your chat box so we have no questions till now again i'll open my slides and we'll see what it has to offer us now we are going to see how we can use python for statistics so I've shown you four basic operations that are mean, mode, median, and variance. Let me explain you all of these terms. So what do you mean by mean? Mean is nothing but the automatic mean or the average value of a particular list or any particular sequence. 
when we talk about median median is what the median the middle value so they can be high median and low median then we have a sequence in which there are odd number of elements so at that time median will be the centermost value but when we have even number of elements in a particular sequence at that time we have high median and low median in high median what happens the two center values the higher value is taken as a median and in low median amongst the two center values the lower value is taken as a median when we only calculate the median for even number of elements then the two center most values the average of those values will be taken as median so i hope you are clear with what exactly median is there's no rocket science behind it it's pretty easy now when we talk about mode mode means nothing but a value that has been repeated the most so over here we can see that one has been repeated four times three ones four 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 thrice five ones and two was also once now when we talk about variance Variance is nothing but what is the variation of each and every element in the sequence from the arithmetic mean. So I hope I'm clear with what exactly these four terms means. If you have any questions or any doubts, you can ask me right now. Any questions, guys? All right. So we have no questions. So what I'm going to do is I am going to open my pie chart and perform these things practically. So this is my pie chart, guys. So over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import certain modules. So I'll type in from statistics import mean and I'll type in print mean and the sequence so I can type in 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 3, 4, 1, 5, 1, 5. Now go ahead and execute this and yep it has given us the mean value or the automatic mean of the sequence that we have given. So now from median, I'm again going to import the statistics module and from that import median. Print median and the sequence. So let it be 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2. All right, let's keep it as five elements. So it'll print the centermost element that is 1. As you can see here, 1 is here. That is at the third position. We have two elements here and two elements here. So it has printed the centermost element or the middle element. Now instead of median, if I want to find in mode here, so for that I'll just type in mode and I'll change this to mode. Go ahead, execute this and yep, as you can see one has been repeated thrice whereas two has been repeated only twice. So one has been repeated the most so it becomes the mode. Now you can even find variance here. Variance as I've told you earlier as well, it gives you the variation in the elements from the arithmetic mean. Go ahead, execute this and yep you can see the variation is 0.3 so this is how you can actually use it for statistics as well any questions any doubts still here guys you can ask me any questions so we have no questions till now fine guys so there are no questions so we'll move forward and understand how you can use python with hadoop so i'll open my slides once more so guys you can use python for hadoop as well now what happens you need to import a library called pydoop and you can write a MapReduce program in Python and process data that is present in HDFS cluster. Now let me explain to you with the help of flow diagram that is there in front of your screen. So you have some input data which is stored in your HDFS cluster across various data nodes. Now what happens you write a logic in Python in order to process that data on the respective node managers where data is stored. Now this stage is basically called map phase and it will produce some intermediate output. So how much of a node managers you have you'll have that many outputs and that will be given to our reducer. Now what happens in the reduce phase? So this reduce phase happens in the node managers. What will happen? Whatever the output that comes from the map phase will be provided as the input to this reduce phase and it will aggregate that and provide us with the output. Now I know you might not understand node managers, you might not understand data nodes, all those things. So we are actually going to discuss about this later in the upcoming sessions. So you don't need to worry about it right now, but I'm just giving a general overview and I'm just basically telling you that you can use Python in order to process big data across the HDFS cluster, which is present across the HDFS cluster. So if you have any questions, any doubts till now, you can ask me guys. Just feel free to ask me any questions that you have in your mind. All right, fine. So we have no questions there, so we'll move forward and I'll just give you a brief summary of what all things we have discussed. First, we saw various applications of Python. We saw that we can use Python for web scraping, for data analysis, for testing and for various other purposes as well. Then we saw what exactly is data analysis and what is pandas. Then we understood various operations that you can perform with pandas like slicing, joining, merging, all those things. 
Then we saw a case study in which we had a data set of total number of percentage of unemployed youth countrywise between 2010 till 2014. And we did some analysis and we found out what is the percentage increase in the unemployed youth from 2010 to 2011. Then we understood how you can use Python for statistics and how we can use Python for Hadoop. Thank you guys for attending today's session. If you have any questions or doubts, you can ask me right now. All right, fine. We have no questions. So this video will be uploaded into your LMS so you can go through it. If you have any questions after that, you can contact our 24-7 support team or you can bring your doubts in the next class as well. Thank you and have a great day. I hope you enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply to them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to our Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.